Ecotech Marine's Generation 5 Radeon continues to be the hot topic in the saltwater aquarium world, and when I first saw it months ago, I wanted to get Ecotech's take on it. I sat down with Tim Marks, one of the founders of Ecotech Marine, to learn more. A lot of the evolutionary changes of the Radeons in general, from the first gen, gen 2, gen 3, gen 4, and now up to gen 5, have dealt with the same basic things, which is we want to get more light for the same amount of power. We also want to add more power because why not add more power? Um, in order to add more power, that means we have to cool it down, but in order to cool it down, typically that means your fan is going to be going faster and your light's going to be noisier. Okay. So we need to keep things quiet, efficient, powerful and also make it more and more water resistant over time as well. Uh, <laughs> Sounds like a nice little bit of R&D constraints to work with. Yeah, it, but it's engineering and that's what we love to do. So it actually ends up being pretty fun. So you can see on the cluster of the, of the Gen 5 that it's, it's bigger right? Um, and it's a single cluster. Uh, the reason for that is it's just easier for us to manufacture a large single cluster in our SMT environment um, just on the other side of this wall, actually. So that's made here in Pennsylvania? Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's not shipped over from overseas? No, no, no. This whole, this whole board is manufactured here in, in the U.S. Wow. We've got more lights. We've got more spread with the new one. More? Yeah, more spread. Because we're, we've pretty much maxed out the, the maximum amount of par that you want to throw at the center of your tank. Okay. Um, what we want to do now as Aquarius is widen that spot right. um, so that you can grow more light uh, demanding corals over a broader range Very within your aquarium. We tested um, our older TIR technology as well okay. to see if by clustering the LEDs more tightly and using a small TIR optic over each one if we could improve the aesthetic and get a better overall efficiency and we chose not to go that route. So this part of R&D is thinking about something, trying something and maybe you don't use it. Yeah, there's no way to know offhand what's going to work. We run models, we do calculations, but we have to build it and we have to test it. And that's the advantage of doing everything in the US is that we can actually um, fully build actual real prototypes of things and, and don't have to just assume or model or guess on what the end product is gonna be. To put the G5 to the test, I wanted to measure the light output in a real world scenario. Lab tests are okay, and often they don't translate well to real life scenarios. Therefore, I put the G5 over a VIP client's 550 gallon reef. The tank is 10 feet long, three feet wide and 30 inches tall. The G5 was installed at the end of the tank and the rest of the lighting, G4 radions, were turned off. The G5 was mounted perpendicular to the length of the tank and about 12 inches off the water line. I measured par right under the fixture, six inches off the edge of the fixture and at the edge of the tank. In-tank flow was left on and all channels on the radion was turned up to 100%. Here are the results. Six inches below the water surface, where you actually start to see corals in a reef tank, the PAR readings were 220 on the edge of the tank, 400 six inches off the edge of the light, and 500 right underneath the light. Moving halfway down the tank, about 15 inches or so, the PAR readings only dropped to 200 on the edge, 300 six inches off the edge of the light, and surprisingly were 250 in the center. Moving down the sand bed, the PAR readings were all close to one another with a 175 reading near the edge of the tank, 156 inches from the edge of the fixture, and 180 directly below the fixture. These readings show just how flat the light is out of the G5. The light spreads out quickly and then stays mostly evenly spread throughout the depth of the tank. Everybody loves comparison, so let's see how the G4 Radeon Pro measured under the exact same conditions. Note that I'm not using a diffuser on the G4 as I don't use them on clients' tanks. Six inches below the surface, the PAR readings were 420 directly underneath the light. They were 360, six inches off the edge of the fixture, and 150 at the edge of the tank. Moving halfway down the tank, the cone of the PAR values is much less pronounced, as they were 200 in the center of the fixture, 175 six inches from the edge of the fixture, and 150 at the edges of the tank. At the sand bed, the PAR readings were 110 in the center, 120 six inches from the edge of the fixture, and 100 at the edges of the tank. Another worthy comparison is how the light looks visually. Here's how the lights look on the sand bed.
I never felt like the G4 had a large disco ball effect, and the G5 does look like a much flatter light, especially when you compare it next to the G4. Now these are two different lights with a different look depending on your sensitivity to what some people would call the disco ball effect. The Generation 5 Radeon adds another capable light to Ecotec's lighting portfolio. I certainly was not expecting the new LED diode arrangement to give such a dramatically different light. 